What I'm going to do today is to introduce some of the things that we've been doing at Mapbox, um, and also show some of the really new things that we've been doing to make maps really work well on the phone. Right? So a bit about Mapbox. Um, we're a four-year-old four company. We build open source tools to make maps, uh, including you know, things you can do. You can point locations on a map. So Foursquare uses our maps. Pinterest uses our maps. But this means that the tools that we build are developer-facing. Right? We don't build any of these maps for everyone. We build tools so that people can build maps on top of it. Now, this doesn't mean that we do only traditional mapping systems. We also do tools that lets you make data-rich visualizations. Right? For instance, Washington Post. Um, and there are a lot of people in the room that I know who also use Mapbox's tools to make visualizations. We do this by using a very powerful open source project called OpenStreetMap. How many of you have heard about OpenStreetMap? That's awesome. Um, so we have, we have set up shop in Bangalore since January, focusing on content improvement in OpenStreetMap. Um, and I'm part of the team here. So at Mapbox, we kind of have tools in the entire data pipeline, right? Data collection, analysis, design, web publishing, and feedback. And, though, and all of this is open source, right? There are JavaScript libraries, there are rendering libraries, you know, the design, the styles, there are CSS libraries that you can use, and everything, all of this is open. So to kind of get into the meat of this talk, it's important to understand how maps work in your browser, right? Have you guys thought about how maps work in the browser? Yes, one. Okay, I'm going to show two approaches uh, to how maps work in the browser and why one's better than the other and how this kind of affects the mobile space, right? So now, the traditional way of serving maps in your browser is this. Have you guys seen these square pieces of maps come into your browser? If you look into your network tab, when, you're, when a map is loading, you can see these square images showing up, right? Now, the reason why this happens is these are pre-rendered maps served from, you know, whatever your server is. But to kind of reduce the amount of data that you're sending into the client side, this massive map is cut into small square pieces, usually 256 by 256 pixels. And that's really how this works. Right? And then you send specific tiles for specific area that you're looking at. You don't send the whole world map into your browser at the same time, because the browser is not going to like that. Right? Now, there are two ways of interacting with these maps. What are the two, ways that you, two things that you do usually on a map? You pan the map, and you zoom in and out, right? So now this is a very interesting aspect of making web maps, right? So when you pan the map, these tiles get loaded and they get stitched together so that you get a very seamless you know, experience. You don't see these tiles, you don't see these, the gaps between the tiles, right? Now what happens when you zoom in and zoom out? You get different details on the map, right? So depending on which zoom level you are, you get to see a different kind of map. You get to see different details. Sometimes you get, you get street names. Sometimes when you're looking really far away, you get like, you know, regional locality names, right? So this makes a lot of difference in terms of performance. And this is the raster, you know, rendering map serving mechanism, right? Now this works really well for traditional web browsers because they are cacheable. These small images can be cached in your browser. So the moment you visit a particular location in your browser, those styles are already cached. Right? So the next time you visit, you don't make those requests. You just show it from your browser. It's faster. Now, they're progressive. They stitch together very nicely so that you, do, you get a very seamless experience. You don't see the gaps between these styles. You don't notice these are actually like tiles. And they're very simple. It's a very simple process. You get some data, you run it through some efficiency plus plus libraries, cut them into like small pieces, and then serve it, right? Now, when it comes to the phone, 
you have very limited resources, right? You're running on low battery most of the time. Um, you have very little memory. So the problem with using raster dials, I don't know if you guys can read this. So when you, so let's say we're looking at Bangalore between zoom level 13 and 20. That means that you get to see some streets, a lot of neighborhoods, you know, parks, a lot of land use features. So you're actually looking at around 61,000 dials on the client side, right? Now this means you need these 61,000 images in your browser to actually see the map properly. And if you want to make this offline, if you actually want to disconnect from the internet and still look at these maps, this takes about 20 to 25 minutes to download 61 of these images into your browser, into your phone. And that's unacceptable, right? You lose, people get frustrated because the map doesn't show up. And most often you must have noticed, right? If you are on a very slow internet connection, some parts of the map will show up, some blocks will still be gray, right? Now, the way we solve this problem is by moving the way we render the maps to the client side, right? Now we render the maps on the server side and send the images onto the client. Now we're gonna move that and say, hey, I'm gonna send the data to the client side and then render them on the phone, in your device, right? So this gives us a lot of advantages. Now, this is a vector way of rendering. This is really performant. You can leverage the GPUs, right? It's much more efficient than depending all on the CPU. This is flexible. I'll show you how flexible this is. And you get the same experience. This is really interactive. You can do search. You can do all the usual map interactions that you do. And this is all open. So the map box is vector tile specification is open. And you know, the Esri mapping giant, they recently adopted our vector tile specification. This is, this is solid technology that's proven. Now, if you look at any of the Mapbox's tools, we've completely moved to the vector side of things. We don't serve raster tiles at all anymore. Okay, this is, so I'm gonna show you a really small example how this works. So this is United States, and I'm loading a 100 MB GeoJSON file. It's JSON, but with map elements in it, right? So map features in your browser. This is client-side rendering, 100 MB GeoJSON file. I didn't want to do a demo, so I just did a screencast, but I can show you if anyone wants to see this. This is where it gets interesting. So, so far, we've been rendering using HTML canvas, right? When you have vectors that come into the client side, you the usual way is to just render using HTML canvas. Now, what if we move this to WebGL? What do you get? You can do stuff like this. Seamless pan zoom. Very smooth. Do you see the smooth interaction? Which you don't get with a raster you know, rendering. And this is important. You can change the style on the fly on the client side, which you never could do when you were rendering those images from the server side, right? So this is kind of one major bottleneck that the customers at Mapbox uh, come to us with, right? Listen, I've been using Google Maps, but I can't change the style. I can't change the design, right? Now, this is super easy because you can switch these styles within the client side depending on your use case. Now this is possible because uh, the styles are also a JSON, has a JSON structure, and it's very like lightweight, right? So I've, I've put the links for all of these things, so if you guys want to take a look at that, please go for it. Um, so this is a very like simple JSON structure. You define all the elements that you want to use, uh, and then just apply the style for the elements. Now, what it means to serve vector tiles uh, into the client side means, you know, you can send the whole data as it is, as a JSON structure, but when you're talking about, you know, a really large area, for instance, this area, it means that you're sending quite a bit of, you know, geometries, right? Actually, like polygons, lines, or points, which gets rendered in the browser. So that's not really ideal to send the full JSON all the time. So what we use is send to compress this data in a binary format called protocol buffers. 
I'm not going to go into the details of protocol buffers, but hit me up if you have any questions. And so that's really small. You compress the whole thing in a very small binary format and then unpack them on the client side, right? Now, when you go to WebGL, you can render these maps at 60 FPS on the web. We've been also working on a lot of these tools to, you know, to make them more na native. So we have an iOS SDK and Android SDK, if that's something that's interesting. Um, so what we're looking at is around 25% less data on the client side in terms of maps. And this is huge. This gives you more room to do other things on the map, right? So you can do stuff like this. So have you guys tried rotating the Google Maps app on your phone? It changes the label position and stuff automatically. And that's because of vector tiles, right? You can render things on the client side, and it's fast. So you can do stuff like that, change colors, you know, zoom in, zoom out, change the style on the fly, contour maps. And I'm not saying that all of this right, works right now really well, and this is all work in progress. This is probably the first presentation that I'm making here uh, in this part of the world around vector tiles. Um, and if you want to take a look at how we're doing this, uh, feel free to come and take a look at our GitHub issues. There's still a lot of work pending. Um, yeah, we're still looking at mobile touch events or like, you know, pinch, pinch zoom, rotate and stuff like that. So yeah, if you have questions or, and we're looking for help, so if you're interested in this kind of work, hit me up. Questions? Hello. Yeah, so about WebGL rendering and uh, can you hear me? I don't see you. Me. Oh, there. Yeah. yeah. So about WebGL rendering and protocol buffers and all that stuff. So is this only specific to Mapbox or does uh, the, do Google Maps also use those technologies? Correct. So Google Maps uses similar technology and protocol buffers is something that Google's been working on for so long and yeah. it's open, right? Um, Google Maps is completely serving vector tiles these days. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do is to make this open, right? Now, if you have your own data and you want to serve vector tiles in the browser, you can use these tools okay. to you know, actually make, those, make that data get into vector tiles and not depend on Google's technologies. Okay. Thank you. So question. Uh, so from a consumer's perspective, let's assume I'm, say, Zomato. Mm -hmm. I have a bunch of um, points of interest food right. places around my house, and I want them to be offline and off online available. So as a user, what advantages do I get? Uh, most of your stuff was about the, the coolness of the technology, pr right. but from a usability on mobile, offline, online data, I guess, uh, right. what are the upsides from a user experience perspective? So, so everything I spoke about is a sort of from a performance angle, and that completely like, you know, directly translates to user experience, right? You don't want the battery to get you know, drained because you're looking at maps all day. And when it comes to vector tiles, it's easy to cache them in your app. So if you're you know, constantly looking at maps within Bangalore, you don't need to necessarily download the same map from the server all the time. Right? And you can pack them within your app all the time. So it's faster. Right? And also, it's really good quality. They're not raster images that are coming from the server side. These are vectors that are rendered within your phone using, you know, taking advantage of the GPU, right? So you get really good quality maps, right? Yeah. Uh, hi. Yeah. So uh, when we are creating a, uh, suppose if I'm planning to create an app for this uh, uh, conference center, okay? So here, if I'll create an in internal map with uh, using SVG, I want to uh, use it in uh, my iPhone app. Uh, then how you, I'll incorporate that in my app and which can be accessible with the GPS uh, means I'll use that app and right. uh, if I walk on the floor, it will tell me like where I am there okay. I'm in the, that particular map. Uh, that's kind of tangential to this talk. Uh, but to quickly answer, there are tools that you can use to, you know, yeah, I want to know that, uh, like how we can generate that with. So uh, you're talking about rendering SVG in the browser? Uh, no, SVG, you suppose SVG, SVG we will create that map. Okay. That map is ready uh, with the SPG. We'll use Illustrator or anything to create that. Okay. Then what is the technology to convert that to an interactive uh, 
is the best way to right. So you can use the open source uh, map rendering libraries called leaflet.js, leaflet.js, or mapbox.js. They're very similar. Uh, so you just load in your SVG and boom, you have it. Okay. So is it a paid uh, thing or is it like? No, it's it's all open source. It's a oh, JavaScript okay. library. 